So where do we begin uh, with our first story that we are going to the press. Uh, bring to you from off the press? Uh, we should be looking at some of these uh, stories that are making the headlines this morning. So let's start with the Punch newspaper. The Punch newspaper leads with the headline, Workers Lament Hardship, Score Buhari Governor's Law on Welfare. And there you have it. The riders there, high cost of living, high cost of living has made nonsense of minimum wage, exactly what we're talking mm -hmm. about. 40% pay rise unions. Um, we have another rider there. Unions, uh, pensioners still earning 500 naira and 750 monthly economy harsh under Buhari says retirees all right you have going down you have opposition's rigging claim fraudulent FG insists still talking about the just concluded elections well has it concluded yet <laughs> that remains to be seen you find details of that on page eight of that newspaper all right let's move on okay uh, we have other stories also from uh, other newspapers that we have here um, let's see what we got we've got uh, something from uh, nature news nature news AFDB bills $25 billion world's largest solar zone. And under that story, you will find uh, where it is written, to provide electricity for 250 million people. And then, President tasks U.S. varsity class on global warming. Okay, we're hoping that that, uh, or we're praying that that uh, solar uh, plant should be in Nigeria. We have all the sun that we need for that. Rainfall forecast. Federal government warns of impending flood. I do hope that um, everybody is listening because uh, we were warned about thunder and thunder and lightning. Uh, and a few days afterwards, it struck in Benway State. And mm. instead of the people knowing that they have been uh, informed that this may happen, they went and buried two people alive saying that they were the cause of the thunder uh, that killed, unfortunately killed an entire family. Okay, climate change, it's unwise for Nigeria to abandon fossil fuels now, Shimbajo. So we should con continue to mine our oil. How, uh, we also have federal government orders no vaccination policy for control of bed flu in fowls. Okay. Uh, we have a story on benefits of, of leafy greens. Uh, when you go natural, you go, you go healthy. And then, um, okay, those are about the major headlines on Nature News. We're hoping you will read up on them and many more. Yes, so from Nature News, we, we go to the Nation newspaper, which leads with you remain sore losers. Federal government tells PDP and LP. You remain sore losers. Don't preempt tribunal outcome. Those are some of the riders. Opposition parties fire back. So government and the opposition parties are going back and forth on these issues of accusations. Uh, the federal government has repeatedly, I think this war of words, mm -hmm. uh, we saw the, the, this war of words uh, kicking up last week, uh, kicking up last week between the leading uh, party, the ruling party, and the opposition parties. Mm -hmm. All right, so on the side, one of the minor headlines there, Sudan evacuation, 637 Nigerians stranded at border with riders there, Egypt delays clearance, Federal government moves Port Sudan route. On top, you have APC legal advisor recommends Lukman's expulsion. You find the full story on page five. Workers are engine room of growth, says Lawan. You also find that on page five of the Nation newspaper. Three Abbott students for UK exchange program. You find that on page six. And Rivers first to host Tinubu says Mwike 
Also, you find details of that on page six. I think that's about it for the nation's newspaper. Okay, workers lament eight years uh, of unkept promises. That's the Guardian. We're going to the Guardian right now. Uh, the Guardian newspaper says workers lament eight years of unkept promises as minimum wage loses value. You can find that on page six of uh, the Guardian. We also have a story on uh, over 2,500 undocumented Nigerian students stranded in Sudan versities. Uh, Nigeria loses, that, that one is on page uh, two. Nigeria loses $4.5 billion yearly to foreign artisans in construction industry. You find that uh, story also on uh, page 18. Then, why Lagos fan demolishes buildings in Ajao Estate? or demolished, rather, buildings in Ajao Estate. The Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria and uh, Lagos have demolished some buildings. Again, Lagos Ibadan Road Repair misses Fashola's deadline. That is page 9 of The Guardian. And then NIN issuance nears 100 million as government intensifies data harmonization about time. We do hope they harmonize this data so that we don't need to queue in for a lot of things uh, that we need to just get easily. We're glad to know you're still there and watching The Breakfast on uh, Plus TV Africa. And today is Mindset Monday. We're hoping you're going to have a positive mindset uh, towards everything. And one of the things is today we're celebrating workers the world over. So happy Workers Day to you. And we're being, <laughs> we're being joined by a public affairs analyst, uh, all the way from River State, Opunabo in Kotaria. Welcome, good morning and welcome to the program, Opunabo. Good morning and good morning, Nigeria. Thank you. Happy Workers' Day. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> I can see the way you yes. said that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, ca I can't be a conflicted fellow, so... I, you know the answer already. <laughs> Are you a happy Nigerian worker, Punabo? Let's start with that. No, 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 I, well, first and foremost, I'm self-employed. So I am happy mm. that I'm self-employed, but I am sad that I'm self-employed in my day. Okay, well, let's kickstart this uh, review. Because of the, of the environment. environment that makes it almost impossible for businesses to try. Mm. Let's kickstart the review of the headlines with... Uh, what relates to what we're just talking about. Workers lament, from the punch, workers lament hardship, score Buhari, governor, Buhari and governors low on uh, workers' welfare. Let's I'm vindicated. Yes. I'm listening. Yes. Uh, those were the head headlines. Do you, do you also, are you also uh, of the scoring, opinion, scoring the present administration, administration so low? Outgoing. Uh, President Muhammad Buhari's administration low on workers' welfare? Well, when you say low, uh, it, it, on a scale of 0 to 100 in an exam, you score 40, you say you scored low. This administration has performed abysmally. This administration has failed Nigerians. That is really, it is one administration that will be found one thing at the end of his tenure, which is May 29th, and the worst in the history of this country, including the military regimes, if you put them together. Are you talking of workers' welfare? Are you talking of health? Are you talking of education? It's the most corrupt administration I've ever seen in this country. At least, I've seen a lot. I'm 53. So, I've seen most, I was, I was born into the military era. I've seen the first civilian administration, the second, and this one. No comparison whatsoever. And the most annoying thing is that they, they, they pride themselves as the best, especially when the likes of Lai Mohammed and the, the special, special assistant of media is talking. And I think I begin to wonder if they are living in the moon or if they have some level of amnesia. We have never had it this bad in this country. Not just workers, but the leadership is cataclysmic. There is nothing to write about the leadership. We have a president that is constantly on a long soldier 
It's either in one country, even if uh, a commissioner in another country's son is getting married, he wants to go. And I have a belief that even when not invited, he will put a call across to say, invite me out. <laughs> Are you not this being too harsh on the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria? The ball stops at his table. The ball stops at his table. And at no point in time can the president exonerate himself from whatever blame. Because if the country is being run smoothly and to the satisfaction of everybody, we also take the credit. Well, he's so you cannot... Uh, uh, yes? Yes. Someone would say to you that when he came into office, uh, Nigerian workers were receiving 18,000 minimum wage, but he moved it up to 30,000 a month. Okay. Okay. 18,000 minimum wage. People were able to buy bag of goods. People were able to buy fuel without stress. People were able to pay school fees. People were able to pay rent, buy cars at 18 naira minimum wage. Now you have 30 naira minimum wage. You cannot afford a bag of rice. You see how illogical, unreasonable that argument is. Mm. The 18 Naira of that time, before he got into office, we were likened to 200 Naira of today. So it's all an epic of vision and poverty of logic for anybody to come up with such an argument. You must have intellectual anemia to, to, to talk about that. Because the 18,000 Naira of that time is about 200 Naira of today. How much was a, a liter of petrol? How much was a diesel of or, or a liter of diesel? But how can you, that argument is not tenable at all. At all. The, this, this is a government that is rudderless in all aspects. How much did you have in our reserve before now? And how much do we have now? And the question, there's nothing wrong with borrowing, but the question is the rationale behind the borrowing. That's the question. The one is borrowed so far. What have you done with that? How, how, how have they impacted positively on Nigerians? The, most of these monies are borrowed to first or line their pockets. You can imagine right now, they are awarding contracts of how many billions of dollars. That is not the wrong government is a continuum. You can argue that. But like I rightly said, is it reasonable? The reasonableness in that borrowing is what we argue. Otherwise, there's nothing wrong with borrowing. But when you borrow, what are you using the money for? And you're going to transfer the whole burden to your successor, the incoming government which I don't want to talk about right now, because that's not the focus. That's not the focus. Okay, let's We're going to hand over to... Oh, my God. Oh, God. <laughs> that's the action. All right. I, I understand your passion, and um, but let's move because time, because of the brevity of time for this section yes, of the program. Yes. Let's move, let's move let's to move, another move. headline, on that, uh, the one on the Nation newspaper, <laughs> uh, the exchange of words between the federal government and the opposition parties. You remain sole losers, federal government tells PDP and Labour Party, and the opposition fire back. How do you respond to this yes, yes. war of words? Yeah, yeah. Well, well, for now, I met a declared Bolam Etinibu, the president-elect, in very controversial I, Without a provocation, I would say that there was some level of complicity. INEC and the APC. Because if you take on the advisement of the issues, INEC flouted his own guidelines. They are blaming the Adamawa wreck. Uh, when the head is rotten, the body will be rotten. The Adamawa wreck took a clue from the INEC chairman. What is their guideline? One, you must announce the results from this, uh, uh, upload results from the polling units. And announce, and before you, you announce, you must ensure that what you have in the Biba is exactly what the um, polling, polling officers or whatever they call have. And the party agents are going to concur. Did that take place? In most cases, results were announced by the INEC chairman without verification from the polling units. Well, this has happened like. So why are you blaming the wreck? 
Adamaware. What is good for the goose is good for the gander. If you can do it, why can't I do it? Because there was a breach of all their guidelines and laws to tell you that Abu they, they were prepared to compromise their letter. You went and brought uh, the road whoever to convey materials who is a non non member of the APC until they went to court to stop it. Do you need to even be educated to know that that is not proper, that you're going to be accused of being biased? They said they were going to uh, escort the bank, so they didn't, they, didn't, they didn't think of any incident at all. What, what sort of ludicrous excuse did they give? That's what I tell you. That they were avenues to prepare to compromise the election. So, when the likes of Lai, Mohammed, and Co come up to say they are saw losers, they are also saw readers. Because the election was rigged. Rigged. Beyond, beyond doubt. There are, you have enough evidence to, evidence to bolster this. Enough, more than enough. To show that the, the results were rigged. The elections were rigged. Well, the givers were made to medicate the process. The Adama Ware. It did not. The Adama Warek has written to uh, the IGP from hiding that he did no wrong. Uh, so let's see how that plays out. <laughs> Wherever he's hiding from, he wrote a letter to the that IGP. That is the same thing. That's the same thing. Uh, the Mahmoud Yakubi said he did no wrong. This election is even worse than Maurice Wood's election. It's the worst election. For how much? 301 billion naira. Why are they treating us like this? Do they think we are fools? Mm. Everybody has an opportunity to steal from the treasury. And the federal government. Yeah, okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm not talking about. Yeah. Uh, okay. No, no, it's so annoying. You know, because it, because look, you people, you people try to trivial. When I say people, I'm not talking of. I mean Nigerians. Trivialize these issues. But look, we are headed slowly but steadily. I've been cautiously for the devil with anarchy. Because when a man is pushed to the wall, he bounces back with his double death. Nigerians are suffering. So. We expected, we thought that this election, the last election, was going to be us out of the mountain of Dista. Uh, you, you know, uh, sorry, the fatigue of Dista and take us to the mountain of hope. But it failed. Our hopes dashed, dreams shattered, and promise of a brighter future keep, keep right. And you know, when frustration sets in, it's not all about trying to gag the press or trying to gag the Nigerians. It's going to be a spontaneous year. Well, the so we should not trivialize this issue. Well, the, the and when you talk now, they say, oh, they want to sue you for uh, 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 trying to uh, plot, plot coup and all what, what, what kind of banana republic are we living in? Well, the cases are in court it's, now. It's online. It's offensive. Yes. yes, we are praying that justice will be served and not judgment. I don't want judgment. Because that will definitely exacerbate the situation. Let justice be served. Who are just, not justice, who are just like that. Justice must not only be seen, but must not only be done, but must be seen to have been manifestly done. In other words, even the market woman, your kind of rider, should be satisfied that justice was found. We don't want judgment. We want justice. So we are waiting for the, for the Supreme Court. I say Supreme Court because that is the last bus stop. We are waiting for the Supreme Court. Okay. And not the evil state kind of justice. Judgment. Where you have somebody who pays for the Supreme Court even gave votes to, 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 to the government. We don't want that kind of... We don't want the kind of Akpadio judgment. Where you said you cannot sign two nomination forms. Akpadio signed two nomination forms. The presidential form and the Senate. The court said he's the candidate. We don't want Lawrence judgment. Which is in violation of the Electoral Act. When a man is pushed to the wall, he bounces back with the government. The Supreme Court is up to be the last book we are waiting. Okay, uh, so let's uh, look at some other headlines now. We're, we're talking about um, uh, Sudan and what is happening in Sudan. There, We have headlines, uh, one of them on the Nation newspaper, saying 637 Nigerians stranded in, uh, at the border uh, there. And also on another newspaper, The Guardian, is saying that 2,500 Nigerians are undocumented 
in Sudan. But the budget was made for 5,500 5, Nigerians. Now these figures are coming out. What's your response to the fact that Nigerians are stranded at the border and that there are some others that we didn't even know about? Do we even know the number of Nigerians in this, in this country? Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, yeah, we, we can, can hear, hear you. you. Yes. Do you even know the number of Nigerians in this country? Do we take record? We don't even know. So today we are over 150 million, tomorrow over 200 million, next tomorrow over 300 million. But they, they keep budget. It's a country pie. If you don't know the number of Nigerians here, how can you know the number of Nigerians in another country? We don't know. Even your government don't even know the number of people living in their states. It's only a conjecture. So, and now census has been postponed. can you prepare for it? Sorry? And now census has been postponed. The census exercise that we're told was going but to be But the LSS was to ensure that before the government leaves, the budget for the census is prepared so that those, it will be a parting gift to a lot of people. Those that will ensure work behind the scenes to ensure the budget is approved and all those things. Allegedly. That's the whole lesson. They, they knew, they, they, well, yes, please save your station allegedly because they'll give you a fine of $5 billion. So please save it. Allegedly. I said it because you didn't say it. I said, not, not, if it's not plus TV, you'll probably get better. Mm, that's it. why we have so to use allegedly uh, too. Yes, I, that's, that. that's, not, that's what I'm saying. Mm. I said it. It's not going to add, not plus TV. So before, because NBC, Will soon give you five billion naira. So, oh, Nabo said it. I'm repeating it. But, uh, this because on the structures of life, they will give you five five billion naira. Now, back to <laughs> the issue of Sudan. The truth is, yes, most times Nigerians emigrate. There is this illegal movement as a result of the hardship in this country to different countries. So, there are some illegal ones. And if there are some illegal ones, you might not necessarily, I want to be honest, necessarily know the figures. You can only know the figures of the legal ones. No doubt about that. But the government will hide under that. That's like a quickly racist. The truth is, the Nigerian government does not know the number of uh, Nigerians living in this country and living elsewhere. It's based on conjecture. Now, talking of evacuation, have you heard that in evacuating the citizens, America had issues. Canada had issues. Uh, Britain had issues. Have you ever heard, heard of that? When you fail to plan, you have planned to fail. I said the government is rudderless. It doesn't know what to do. First and foremost, why the dilatoriness? Why the delay? I heard from uh, um, the former minister for external affairs, Bola, I think Bola uh. He said, most times, even the embassy that starved of form. And so it's difficult for even the ambassadors and high commissioners to function. Difficult. Because ordinarily, at, when they realize that this might snowball into a war, it is a duty of the ambassador high commissioner who is representing the president to start preparing for evacuation, especially in states in countries like Sudan. They were relaxed, did nothing. But I believe he would have evacuated his family members out of Sudan long before. So that tells you the way the, our government treats its people. Okay, because the levity with which lives are treated, yeah. the, way, the, the levity with which lives are treated in this country. Kill one man. Let look. Kill one man in a, in Nigeria. Kill one American. If you are not careful, there will be war. And within 90 minutes, it ends there. It's too, it's, it's too much because then technology has not improved. Mm. It will be 20 seconds in Nigeria. Just kill one American. Yeah, that's Look it. at when one an American's life was threatened, how they came into this country and took him away. Yes. And the federal government came out, came, came on air to lie that they were well fit. I remember that incident uh, clearly, uh, Punabo. Uh, let's yes. move on to the Guardian newspaper.
And uh, one of the low headlines there, smaller headline says, again, Lagos Ibadan road repair misses Fashola's deadline. The Lagos Ibadan road repair misses Fashola's deadline. Give us your take on that. You know, there is, there is this virus in this government. Fashola, as a governor, performed credited. Credited. But you know, don't be, I've forgotten how the Bible put it, don't be unevenly yoked. Uh. And they got unevenly yoked. That is the problem. Now, also understand his limitations. He's not the chief executive. As governor, he was the chief executive. So he performed. He called himself. But you have the virus in this bloody system that destroys everything. No matter how well intentioned, there must be a call. It's a virus, you know, in this government. And that, I believe, is such a lost problem. But you know, you must have gotten enough uh, assurances from Mr. President and the Federal Executive Council to say, yes, we are going to do this. We are going to do that. But he has forgotten that he's serving in a government with lips dripping with words of inter, 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 uh, nullification and interposition. A government that has no credibility. You can't go to back with what they will tell you. Look at the same former service to Buratai. The NSA said the what they have on ground cannot justify their mouth that was given to them. Their successors said the same thing. What happened? They were rewarded with Ambassador. Look at Look, They only come after you when they perceive you, see you as an enemy. Fashion thought it was going to be. One single, the question a lot of people say, why didn't you design? I resigned. I should say, well, that is the question on the list of most Nigerians. Why didn't you resign? Yeah. He took Buari, he believed Buari, who climbed Forgetting that, oh, sorry, let me not go and say something that the place for five billion in Africa. A in Kotaria. He misread Buari. He had a misconception of Gwari. He thought Gwari was Gwari of, uh, of uh, 1984. He has forgotten that Gwari was not a child even in 1984. Okay, Punabo, before you go, because time is not on our side, before you go, tell us the state of the River State workers where you reside. The state of their welfare. Manaku segregation, Manaku segregation and change discrimination. Sorry. Very, very, very bad. I was listening to um, your previews. I mean, I'm sorry, is it, is it preview or what? What is it called? Before we started this uh, okay, your discussion, chance. before we started. Okay. Yes. Now, I'll tell you. Like you rightly said, you don't talk of bridges and say, these are dividends of them. To start with, it's no new to build because you are elected to build it. Mm. You are elected to improve on the welfare of Nigerians. But then, like Jake Steve, I keep making reference to Jake Steve. Like Jake Steve, why he talked about infrastructure development, he also talked about human capital development. Mm. They, they ran simultaneously, side by side. Jobs, you are industries, you are built. Jobs we are created, and at the same time, the roads and so on, we are being taken care of. That is governance for you. You don't concentrate on the first right development. To me, when you do that, it's simply because you are looking for money to feather your pockets. And when you want to pay salaries and pensions, you cannot cut corners. So that is immaterial to you. You don't have promotion, salaries are old, pensioners are old. Is that governance? There's no government. If I do one billion bridges, it doesn't matter. The welfare, most, in fact, it is so enshrined in our constitution. The welfare is the most important thing to every man. The bridges are what you build. 
Are they going to be used by students? They are going to be used by Nigerians. A man who has not eaten, of what use is the growth? A man who has not eaten, is he going to buy a car? <laughs> so it makes no sense. It should be, well, I also run and build 20 bridges. Build 10 bridges and use the money for the remaining 10 to build industry, set up in that zone, so that people will be gainfully employed. Even the bridges you're building, you sell your it's employment, it's not employment, first and foremost. Most of them were are paid 750 naira per day, which is less than the 30,000 naira. And when they, the last time one they protested, one was killed. The other one disappeared till tomorrow. They were first arrested and detained by the police. So we're not talking about by the police. So when you build bridges, that's to start with, you're talking about I'm talking about in terms of financial gains now. 750, which is less than the 30,000 naira. So what kind of employment? And what level of people? You when you talk of employment, you're talking of the lower class, the middle class, and the upper class. Those are prisons. They can never, artisans, they can never be made managers. So it's an, it's another form of slavery, modern day slavery. Mm. So if you have to build 20 bridges, build 10. And set up all our industries are dead, built set up by data speed. In the 60s and early 70s. With a glass, but all oh, dead. So no employment. And there is embargo on uh, uh, employment into the civil service. Although some are secretly being employed. That's why I said Manaku said we going to change this to Okay. So that exactly, I'm just trying to encapsulate, that exactly is the picture of reversing. Thank you so much for your analysis of Punabo in Kotaria. It's been so good listening to you give your insight and thoughts on this very important you, topics on our headlines. Well, that's the much we can take on off the press on the breakfast this morning. Do stay with us. We'll continue to come back with our hot topics. <laughs>